welcome to part 5 of our e-commerce website building lesson series. In this one we're going to continue inventory management because when we last left off we were able to add inventory items and we had these edit and delete links added into each one in the list. So we're going to make those active now using this items ID on each one. That way we know which one to target for editing and deletion. And here I am in inventory list.php. I'm going to go up to the top where it parses the data for the new entries or the new items. Right after we have successful upload of the image and insertion into the database, I'm going to put a header right here so we can grab this header code. And I'm doing this so that after the form parses in this section of code here, we want to auto refresh the page. And this is because the store manager adds an inventory item and the page shows that new item when they press submit. If they were to press refresh in their browser, it would try to add the item again. It would try to parse the form again and you don't want that. So what you can do to alleviate that problem is just put in this header code and this exit. You don't even really need the exit, but I'm just paranoid. I like to use it. But you can put in this header code and just go to inventory list.php. That, that way after they put in a new item, it goes into the database and the image for it is uploaded. This script will header to this inventory list.php. That way if they ever hit refresh after they add an item, it will just refresh the inventory list.php page and it won't try to re-add the item. Now let's try this out and make sure it works as intended. I'm going to FTP this file up and here I am in my store admin area. I'm going to click manage inventory. You can see I have a black hat and the next product I'm going to add is black pants. These are cool black pants you must buy. Choose a file, black jeans, add this item now. And you see it reused that header code. That way if I click refresh now, I'm just on the inventory list.php page. If I didn't add those two lines of code, or this line of code, this header line, when I clicked refresh just then, right now, it would try to add that item again. And you don't want that, so you add that header code. Now we can collapse that code back up. This code right here is the code responsible for rendering out this list. In each line that comes out, in each item, you might want a higher line separation. See how my lines are kind of right on top of each other? I think if you go into your style sheet, let's go into our style sheet, I think we can fix that by putting a line height attribute right here. Line height, let's go with 1.5 EM semicolon save and let's refresh this page yes see what I did that made things at a line separation to where it's not so much stacked on top of each other each line so even in the store admin when you look at that now you'll have more of a line separation in between in between your links there all over the site any paragraphs you write and things like that Okay, so here we are in the block that grabs the whole list for viewing. And here we have the edit link and the delete links. So what I'm going to do, just to keep things simple for demonstration purposes, the href value for the edit link I'm going to make in inventory edit.php. This is a page that's going to be in the admin section that we have not created yet. And what you have to do is let that page know which item ID which item it is in the system that you want to edit so you put a question mark and put PID which is short for product ID that's going to be the variable name that gets sent over the URL variables so you can send a variable using the URL link and it will be transmitted to the page called inventory edit.php so you'll be transmitting this product ID and all you have to do is grab ID right here and make sure that value gets sent after the equal sign there. 
So PID, you just say question mark, PID equals ID. So what it does is it sends this variable name of PID and it has a value of whatever this item is. That way when it gets when the inventory edit page opens up, the inventory edit page knows exactly which item that is to be targeted for editing. The href value for the for the delete will be this page itself. The one we're on now, inventory list.php. This one we're going to send a value of delete id equals id. So what's going to happen is you press delete for any inventory item. It's going to make this same page reload inventory list, but it's going to reload with a question this time and not this whole page that you see. And I'll show you how we do that right now. Okay, so in order to make the delete functionality possible, let's collapse this code block back down. And we're going to put a new PHP code block in. And we're going to put it right above where we parse the form data and upload the picture and all that to the system. Right above that block, I'm going to put a new PHP block. Make myself a note inside of this block say delete item question to admin because basically in this section of code we're going to check if it's set that get variable on the URL and I'll show you exactly how that works let me collapse this back if it's set you change this post to get that way it targets the URL variable and call this delete ID because that's the name of the variable. So we say if is set get delete ID then we know that the store admin pressed delete on one of those inventory items. So we want to echo out a question to them. So we'll echo out a question to them because you don't really want to delete the item right away when they press delete because if they accidentally press the delete button for an inventory item you don't want to just zap it out of the system so if they press delete we're gonna give them a question on the page and the question is going to say do you really want to delete this item you give them a yes and you give them a no if they press no you just reload the inventory list page and don't do anything if they press yes then you actually delete the item okay so you set up a little question Mine's, mine reads, do you really want to delete product with ID of, and then you list the product ID for them to see that they are about to delete. And here's little text that says yes and no. On the yes text, I'm going to go and add a link. And the href value, I'm going to say inventory list, the same page, dot php. This time I'm going to give it a URL variable of yes delete equals this delete ID, the ID of the product to be deleted. So we can just take that value, pop it right there. So if they click this yes, we're definitely going to delete it now. We'll have the product. ID to delete by sending it through the URL variables once again. Now if they click no, you're just pretty much using that as a cancel function so the href value on that is just going to be inventory list .php. It's just going to reload the inventory list page. Also put exit here that way the script doesn't render out the whole page. You just want that one question to show. And then they can choose what to do from there. All right, so I FTP the new file. Let's go ahead and reload the page. And if I hit one of these links now for delete, let's see what happens. Let's try to delete the black pants listing. See? Do you really want to delete the product with ID of 2? Yes, 
no so what I'm going to do is click no it'll just take me to the inventory list page now I hadn't put the code in for hitting yes yet if I hit yes we want to delete it now so right under that code looking at this code you can see that this will not run unless the get variable the URL variable of delete ID is set in the script. So now we have a new if they want to if they want to confirm deletion we have a new URL variable it says yes delete and it's going to have the value of the product ID to delete. Using that know-how we can just simply add another if condition right under that one says if is set get yes delete and right here put ourselves a little note to remove item from system and delete its picture so basically all you have to do is delete from database first and then unlink the image from server. Now, where these two lines are, I'll put the code in that will allow you to do those things. Okay, first we delete from database, or you can do it in any order you want. You can unlink the file from the server and then delete from database, or delete from database, then unlink the file, it doesn't matter. Okay, so here's the code to delete it from the database. What you do is you put the get variable of yes delete whatever the value of this product ID is into a local variable called ID to delete then you run a MySQL query that says delete from products where ID equals ID to delete variable limit one now to unlink the image from the server and delete the picture you use this code here and what this code does is it specifies the pick to delete and that is equal to up one folder into inventory images and then it's going to target this ID to delete dot JPEG then you just run a quick little if condition to make sure that file actually exists that you're targeting for deletion and you say if the file exists pick to delete unlink pick to delete and it's as simple as it is now let's just send a header like we did here in the parsing section use the header to reload the page right here after it gets done with deletion so it's just going to reload inventory list.php and then exit so that is deletion and that should be everything you need for deletion so let's keep the note for ourselves saying delete item question to admin and delete product if they choose. That's what that code does. Now let's make sure we test it out. Okay, in my FTP software, I'm looking in my inventory images folder, and I have two inventory items there. I'm going to delete item number two. So let's go to where your store is running online. The inventory list page. Let's reload it. Refresh it. And right where it says black pants, I'm going to click delete. It says, do you really want to delete product of, with ID of 2? I'm going to hit yes. And you see what it did? It reloaded the inventory list.php page and it removed black pants from the MySQL database and it removed the image from the server. Now, all we have to do is cover what happens when they press edit. We're going to have a new page come up that's called inventory edit.php where this inventory items information will be pre-populated into a form that looks very similar to this form here 
that way they can edit that information so that will be in part six coming up today very soon so stay tuned